Hi, everybody. It's going to be a very small group tonight. Well, it's not tonight. It's 11 o'clock. So. Well, welcome back. They changed how they ask you to confirm the meeting is being recorded again. What? Why would they do that? Lawyers. <laughs> Lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> Just well, that makes did it. it was in a banner at the top and now it was like a big giant window in the middle of my screen it's like what how do you do with change bob is that like not, not well <laughs> right. i'm amazed that is, I'm that still is not a shame some a, people a, really a cannot do well but better than some people i actually know two people uh, pretty well who are older than me but like not that much older five six years and they they refuse to get a smartphone <laughs> Oh and no, that freaks me out. They refused, and we, we so we took a trip to Manhattan last weekend to 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 see play, and at the train station, uh, the only way to pay for parking was with a smartphone app. Mm. Yep, they, like they they changed it from the last time we were there a year ago, where you could do a credit card or whatever. No, now you had to download the app to your phone and pay that way and tell well, them what's by your. That would save a lot of yeah. Um, yeah. stress. With I mean, saves a lot of money. I'm, wow, can you imagine? So if you don't have a smartphone, yeah. Yeah, and, and no, I went up to the window out. since no one was there and I wasn't bugging. I said, what would happen to my two friends who don't have one who came here and not knowing this because you changed it? Well, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Uh, we, we, right. we have, and it, in Las Vegas, we have, sick of, we have season tickets to the theater and to the, to the Broadway series. They send us the ticket on a smartphone and we use the smartphone, smartphone for getting in and for parking. Yes, yes, I but just see, did that. that the, you know, the show I did just did that. That's right. It was a, a Seat Geek app, and that and you're not allowed to print them. You're not allowed to no. take a picture of them. You have that to have that. Out, to that cuts them. out poor people. That cuts out poor yeah. people. People with learning disabilities. It really is a barrier. And and, and, and my stubborn, my stubborn old friends. Interesting. And legal tender. They must take legal tender. We have to be vigilant about this. We can't eliminate uh, actual money that human beings yeah. can have in their pockets. Right. I, don't, I don't know that that's actually true, though. There's a lot of places that have like credit feel, stores. Yeah. I think you're legally not required to accept cash, but it's kind of yeah. You you you, you aren't. It has yeah. to be um, obvious when you enter or as you're going into the store that you don't take cash. It, yeah, you, I think you so. are not yeah. required to. But if you right. already owe them someone, I think they have to take cash. Like if if so, I owe you so forty dollars, you would have to take right. cash as so then, filling that debt. But to in, in to, and a store does not have to. Well, right. then we put pressure on them socially because you're cutting out poor people, old people. I work with the homeless community a lot. We're trying to get people back into society. And it's another way for them to keep seeing no, no, no. Everywhere they go, we have a two-tier system. People with the fancy phones and the phone plans and the people that don't have it. It's not a way to behave in the United States. Oh, yeah, I totally. In I, my I, opinion. I, I agree with you. I'm, saying. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying. I, it's just, unfortunately... Um, the, the legal system doesn't they have require it. We're right. going that I mean, way. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, Thank Hamilton you. wants me to you. let you know that we're getting started, right, Ham? <laughs> He's right here. Thank you, Hamilton. Does okay. Hamilton miss the, the nocturnal visitor? Well, here's a raccoon right here. No, they. <laughs> they... <laughs> he was like clueless, like, what? He's like some that old man such, that kind of wanders that in. Was like, such Whoa. a great moment. It's looking up at the raccoon. That was so that was funny. A, that was Ariadne. Yeah, I know. But it so, was so funny. I mean, to me, just from my cats, when they see something, like even out the window, if there's a squirrel, <gasps> they run over the window. Like it, I can't imagine that my cats would react that way unless the raccoon was visiting all the time and they were bored of it. And we just don't know <laughs> it that. It turns out that cats, like people, have well, a range of personalities. I have no, I, I've given up thinking That's about right. what my cats think. Because they sit here in the, he's sitting here in the window. There's a bird feeder on the other side of the window, it's about this far from his face. And he's he's not really, there's nothing going on. I mean, they can go outside if they want and they've got the whole world out there. They just stay in my in my uh, backyard usually. But no, they they could care less. I mean, there was a time when they used to get all excited when they saw a bird through the window, but no. Okay. So we have, I'd like to try to do these monthly, so. You know, I have to get used to doing this again to where we could do them um, monthly on a on a weekend so people can join. So and, and you need to write your um, pages announcing it in various European languages. 
So they will show up. Huh? That would be something. I know Adrian just messaged me. She goes, how many showed up? And I told her who was here. She goes, nobody from Europe. And I'm like, that's <laughs> not. Well, that's all right. Okay. So we'll have fun anyway. Gail, Jane, Karen, and Mike. What is your team name tonight? Today. It's not night for me. Karen, you do it. Oh, she's getting out. Now. Some, something about not hurting dogs and cats. Not eating. <laughs> it won't even hurt them. No dogs or cats were eaten. Is that what it was? During the, the formation of this team. team forming and, or choosing. And the forming of this team. Of, yeah. of this team. So, yeah. So I'll wait for you to write it down for me. Okay, Leonard, Peggy, somebody, Robin, somebody Vincent. Somebody going to write it down for Sue? And uh, Vincent, we were, you, you have it. Yeah, I got it. We were fairly. Uh, ooh, what was that? A lot of thought went into this. Oh, Romero's there. <laughs> yeah, not. We were. We were fairly. <laughs> uh, yeah, we had to think about it for quite a while. Now, I, I, if you're still thinking about it, here comes Romero. Oh no, 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 no! I got it. We're team We're two. Team two. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously? That's what you came up with? Yeah. Okay. It's, it, it's to drive home the point. This is the first time we've ever only had two teams. Ooh. Yeah. Well, Romero's here. We could put him on a special team just by himself. Romero. Romero? Hey, hello. Good morning. Are you bringing hey, Faye? Hey, hey. Uh, she's out running right now. I mean, I think she's almost finishing, so I don't know when she'll be back. Okay, Maybe but now. we have you. Cool. Yeah. So perfect. I'm putting you on team one. We there's still only, haven't given only, me their team name yet. There's only two teams, Romero. Only two oh. teams. <laughs> so we'll be done quick or no. No, it doesn't know. mean there's two categories, just that there's two teams. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, because I'm running. It doesn't also, mean doesn't that we won't spend the entire time interrupting. Yeah, it'll <laughs> be fun. Okay, team one. I'm still waiting for you to type your name in. I think uh, I don't hear the type. sound of typing. My hands are full. Okay, I'm, I'll try to come up with what we said. I can't too type. busy eating cat. <laughs> no, no dogs or cats were harmed in the forming of this team. I can't. Maybe type. I should ask Team two, 2 to write Team One's. Um... Sorry, I can't type right you now. You don't like. You don't I, put, I I did something. I hope that's no cats or dogs were harmed in the forming of this team. Okay, got it. Is you know, it it's, I've heard dogs a lot about this. Cats? They're talking about how we should be dogs. It's dogs. 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 So I've heard in the dogs. media them them talking about should we like talk about this in a joke, you yeah. know, and and continue with the humorous of it and making fun, and then you hear well, these other people like, no, we shouldn't be talking about it because it's it's serious and these people are being harmed. And I'm like, I think it's somebody on one of the panels to make it about... a joke. As Somebody on one of the panels on CNN actually said, cats, I, I, think, "I think it's fine, but it's when you actually uh, repeat the thing the idiot said and bring and in the subject of immigration." Him. So, if we start talking about Haitians and and the right, then that's uh, the, and and in that, that then that's to do with off. it. But if it's just like what an idiot this guy says that people people think that you know, then that's cool. The problem I, is I think people so. believe it, and if we keep making it a joke, they will start realizing it's not to be believed. Maybe that's and and that's Susan, that. did you hear? Did, Susan, did you hear the the, quota, the quotation attributed uh, to uh, uh, Curry, which apparently he didn't say about his Haitian mother? Curry, who's yes. my, my Haitian, yeah, my Haitian Steph Curry, Steph Curry. Um, my my Haitian, my half Haitian mother. Is about to roast a pig just like Harris did on Tuesday night. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Now, the one I saw on Facebook in that same line oh. was uh, Trump paid $130,000 in order to get spanked, and Kamala did it for free. <laughs> <laughs> those I think are great. Let's, let's continue with those names because those are like great. All right, Vincent. I think we should do the whole thing. Everybody is an animal. It's just as long as they're not starting to eat the raccoons, we're okay. So is it okay to be a, a polar bear? This is a polar bear, apparently. I'm not quite sure that's a polar bear. 
the, what it said on the avatar. Well, it's cute, it, whatever it is. I don't know. I uh, guess I guess the having the shirt on is what ruins it for me that it doesn't look don't, like don't eat order me. Around, right? Don't eat me. <laughs> Vincent, do they have a naked polar bear? Susan would like a naked polar bear, please. Uh naked polar bear? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see what they oh. eat more chicken. Eat <laughs> more chicken. <laughs> Avatar. <laughs> they do not. They do not have a naked polar bear. It looks all like the... all the all the animals have clothes on. Why is that? Yeah. Why? Animals because we're decent people. We're decent people. Because the Jordan. app was created like by the, the Mormons. Bag of people. <laughs> the well, it's one more thing they the have Mormons? to do to try to cook us this is get us out of our clothing so it takes more time and we can have more time to escape. There, is that better? <laughs> I like it. You're a panda. 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 Oh, panda. Oh, it, yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. Panda. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Still, still not naked. Still not naked. No. 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 Like Let's try it. now and see if you can find one that makes him naked. Piggy's just sitting like there. Polar bear. How about a polar bear? Polar bear at the beach. Then it'll just be topless on top, maybe. Ah. Oh, well, they're not Wolf, wearing any oh, pants. Mike Wolf looks like Jesus with glasses. He there, looks like I, I just saw an article Jesus, today but... about some rocker. That I didn't know who he was. If he's a Nirvana and the Foo Fighters, and he just he he showed how when you've got some serious controversy coming out, just to let it out because otherwise it's going to come out and it's going to eat at you. A uh, polar bear. Dave the, Grohl. There I am. Yeah, Dave, Dave, yeah. You did not know who Dave Grohl was. Even mm -hmm. I knew who Dave Grohl no, was. Never heard of him. I've never. Like, heard him. Yeah, I, apparently I've, I've been heard of Nirvana. I've been having sex outside my marriage, and now I have a kid. Yeah, a little daughter, apparently. Please, yeah, see, please now, give us some privacy. Add, add some gray to your hair, and you would look just like him right now. That's I, I've heard of Dave. I've, I've heard the name Dave Girl. I could not have assigned him to a band if I, my life depended name, on it. The name doesn't even sound like a name. Gruel? I mean, how I know. G-R-O-H-L. I went and looked him up, and I was like, oh, okay. I even know that song i'm sorry hamilton is telling me to start the categories now okay so <laughs> this is game number 233 season five september 14th 2024 thank you for joining me um we have two teams that are vying for the competition of a saturday 11 o'clock <laughs> game <laughs> team number one no cats or dogs were harmed in the forming of this team versus we're team two all right so i have some unusual things for oh my god romero <laughs> what the hell is that He's gonna, are those cotton balls wow. what are those from like a founding father wig there. From the what? Hair the, <laughs> the hair of the founding fathers? What, what, what were they called? Okay, cool. Here, here, here comes, did, here the, comes the judge. Here comes the, the judge. Yeah. <laughs> the, this is a costume from the play Hamilton, for sure. Oh, my God. That's awful. I like oh. it. Oh, no. It looks like cotton balls to me. It, it's. I think it's some. I think it's from Hamilton, right? Yeah. You, yeah. I like it. He's looking at himself like this, like he's looking in a mirror. It's so funny. Okay. <laughs> all right so i've got some old and some new for you and even the new is old so this should be interesting for you guys today today to, to do today so i've got a lot to choose from actually when i think about it but what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to do some literature classic children's literature now this is a category we had in 2020 right at the beginning and it's kind of fun so let's let's start with that. So the team the the category is called classic kid lit. And I guess I should write that over on my little thingy my bob. And oh, I can't I can't put it in until I have the 
me let me make the I forgot that since I'm on the same spreadsheet, I have to do it. I have to start. I have to copy and paste. Okay, so let me put this over here so I can do this correctly. What the heck was that? <laughs> Sorry, all. Let me go back up and copy it again because I did it wrong. Okay, so classic kids lit. Let's see how well you know with your classic kids literature. I will just do this and I will put it in in a minute. Make it look easier. You guys all read as kids, right? Uh, the actual reading of the books is not the thing. It's the remembering of the details. Okay, so here's question number one. Jonathan Swift's 1726 book travels into several remote nations of the world was written to lampoon London royalty. This book is better known as what? I assure you, you have heard of this book. That's my hint. Okay, question number two. Written in 1894, The Jungle Books was written by whom? It's too fast for me to go. Is that supposed to be plural? I think so. So that's okay. Here's question three. The beginning of picture books, the tale of Peter Rabbit from 1901 was written by whom? What's the beginning of picture books? Isn't that interesting? Am I going too fast if I give the next one? No, no it's good. Okay. Question number four. Name the author of these short stories. And it's all the same author. The Princess and the Pea, The Emperor's New Clothes, The Little Mermaid, and The Ugly Duckling. Question number five. J.R.R. Tolkien's popular work, The Hobbit, was published in what year? Plus or minus one year. One, Susan. Yeah, I know. Oh, I got to change this because this is back before we had it all where we. Um... One. Back in the day where we where I just started out, where we had multiple points. So I'm going to change this question to reflect our new rules. Question number six, name one of the four children that go through the wardrobe into Narnia in C.S. Lewis's book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Question seven. Actors Mary Martin, Sandy Duncan, Robin Williams, and Maude Adams all performed as this fictional character. Number eight. They preformed. Did I do that wrong again? You did it again. Oh <laughs> my God. <laughs> I guess I'm or, or post form. I guess I just I guess my spell there. check doesn't work. I've got it well, as the preformed other word. is a word. So. I know, but I just can't see it. I'm I, now that I look at it, I go, yeah, you're right. But so 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 is concrete, but I wouldn't put it there. Concrete. Oh, it's a it's word. also a word. The word. Okay. Shake it off, Susan. We're good. We know what you're talking about. Okay, I've corrected it now, but not on there. It's on my spit sheets. Corrected. Okay, this is the opening paragraph of what classic book. She was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank and of having nothing to do. Once or twice, she had peeped into the book her sister was reading, but it had no pictures or conversations in it. And what is the use of a book without pictures or conversations? It's the opening paragraph of what classic book, and you have heard of it. My sentiments exactly. Okay, question number nine, number nine. Okay, wait, I got to change this for one point each name. Though. Okay, 
Wow, this must have been from the old timey time when yeah, you had this is the a lot one of, of different our, points this is our for first game. Question. This is the yeah, first game. I joined. One point each, name the author. So let's say for one point. Just one point, name, one either, point name, name either name either one or something. Just get off just cross out each. For one point, name the author of the night kitchen. No, but it wants the author of Is it the is it two different answers? Yeah. Or then just say either. Just points if you get either of them. Yeah, for either of them. One point, or, name or either. either the author. Either, either, tomato, tomato. Preformed, performed. Or potato, the Potato, potato. <laughs> okay, so yeah, these are these are old. This is game number one stuff. Wow. Okay, so here's the question redone. All right. I'm just looking at it to make sure that it's okay. And then lastly, question 10. Thank you for bearing with me, y'all. Uh, here's the basic plot. You name the book. Fern is the farmer's daughter. She begs her father for the piglet he was about to butcher. Fern raises the pig who grows fatter and fatter. And Fern also begins to understand what the animals are saying to each other. The pig is scheduled to be slaughtered until another creature living at the farmhouse, the farm intercedes. Okay. So I'm going to open it. Wow, I only understood every other syllable. <laughs> Karen. And the really weird thing is, is Zoom Art. says that she is uh, muted. That is really weird. We heard anything. That's because Art. she's down the street and she's yelling. <laughs> it's my <laughs> mic picking it up. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, go to your rooms. I'll, I'm going to put Romero in team win. Oh, because they actually came up with a name. <laughs> Get ready. Thank you. They're gone. They're gone. Yes. I did that for myself. And the first one should be a give me. That's not the name. <laughs> first one is what? Gulliver's Travels. Gulliver's Travels. Oh. Damn. Oh. Murders. It's Gulliver. Oh. It's an I, not an A. Gulliver. Livers. Doesn't oh. matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It well, it'll get rid of the, the spelling error. It corrected it. Okay. Uh, Kipl Kipling? Yeah. I Richard think Kipling. Kipling. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah it's Rudyard, not Richard, but who cares? Richard. I about it. No idea Art. about yeah. Peter Rabbit. Anyone know Peter Rabbit? Isn't it Beatrix, Beatrix Potter? Potter? Oh. Uh, Beatrix with an X. Beatrix Potter. Wow. Any relation to uh, the other Potter? Harry? Harry Potter, yeah. <laughs> no. Well, they're both British. They are both yeah. British. Yeah. Same same language. Yep. I forgot this. Uh, I Han, Hans Christian Anderson. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> People did not know that in my matrix. Anderson? Anderson. Anderson. Okay. Mr. Anderson. Um so the Hobbit was no, written after after the uh lord of the rings books i know yeah, that that is true yeah and they're yeah between the first and second world wars yeah hmm. it's late 30s but uh, plus or minus one year 1940 i think it's a little earlier than mm -hmm. that Maybe we should go thirty-eight yeah. or thirty-nine. I would, yeah, I would go in the middle of the late of the of the second half of the thirties, so thirty-seven. Thirty and thirty-seven. Okay, that works. Yeah, that's 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 a guess. Yeah. 
Uh, Who's up on Narnia? I've never read any of those. Edmund. And there's a Peter, I think. And there's a Peter. There's an Edmund. I'm trying to remember. Those girls. The sister's mm. name, Nancy. Yeah, but. Yeah. Name one. Just one. Just one. Just, just one. one. Okay. Peter. Well, we, the next, the yeah. next one's a Peter, too. Peter Pan. Oh, Peter Pan. Hmm. No idea about the book, anyone? Alice in Wonderland. Are you guessing? That was my guess, but just wild guesses. Do you know that for sure? Pretty sure. Cool. This one I don't know. I think I know it's... This, one. this is... Uh... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Gail. No, go ahead. Carol. Okay. Lewis is Carol's... Oh! Uh... Alice? Yes. Alice in Wonderland. Wonderland. Yeah, that's what yeah. I thought it would be. And I do know this one if nobody else does. Yeah. I don't. Okay. It's Mari Sendak, and the book he's most famous for is Where the Wild Things Are. Oh, I know the book. I think I know the last one. Yeah. I think yeah. Actually, I don't know it. Um, yeah, what is it? Do I go ahead and say it? A babe pig in the city. Oh, oh, no, oh. that's not what I. Thought. Oh no, I that was that was my joke answer. Oh, oh, I, it fits babe. <laughs> yeah. Do do you, do you know the answer? I I know it. If you don't, I I know it. it's it's Charlotte's Web. No, that's right. Yeah. Oh. oh okay. The other creature is the spider. Hmm. All right, I guess. Do we have any? Do no, I, little... I think we got it. Do you, do you want it to put Mari Sindak in just in case? Yeah. Or would that Beatrice, be? I mean, there's some spelling errors, but I don't like Beatrice is Beatrix with an X at the end. Yeah, that's, I thought so when I was writing it. Rudyard doesn't have a K in it in the no. middle. Rudyard. I, I when I looked at it, I thought that was probably the case, but I didn't remember. Yeah, the only one that's really a guess is 1938. Yeah, and that's we're not going to get any farther. Oh, than... does it say one point? Each for the author and the book. So we, well, if you put Marie, she changed it because the rules. Oh yeah, changed. add Marie Sentak to the. To where? For nine, you need to put the author's name in there as well. I mean, you, I don't think that we're great. We, as long as we know that we have that. Hello. It's Karen. It's Karen Araujo. <laughs> Hi. It's Karen. Yeah, I see the eight three one number now. Hi, it's Karen. That makes sense. The rooms are closing. Hi. hi. <laughs> Hamilton I says hi. I can't. I can't. I I uh, am just on my phone. I don't know how to join a room. So you're here in two places at the same time. Well, the rooms are already closing, so it's okay. No, no, the other one. No, the other one. Um, yeah, I, I lost the the video signal on Zoom, so I just dialed in. Okay, that's cool. You can kick me out of the other one. Just the other one, kick it out. I think it's gone. Oh, okay. You said I was in two places. Well, no, I guess not. All right. Okay, so thank that you, was Susan. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so the whole world does not see the phone number, which now is being recorded. You probably should change that. I can't change it. Susan, I can't change it. Susan, Karen. Susan, How do I change it? Susan, rename. You do rename. Oh. Under participants, right? Okay, I got it. You can yeah. click the little three. Uh, the, there you uh, go. I got it. There you go. I don't. I don't mind if my number shows it's public on in a lot of places. 
She's she likes that. She says she writes her name on the <laughs> I'm only kidding. Only kidding, Karen. We love you. Hamilton is so expressive because he knows I have I'm I'm eating Ritz crackers and the sound of the cracker um. makes him think that there is there's a treat. So, yes, I know him. Okay. So you guys all did fantastic on this one. It's just too easy. So I guess the next one will have to be a lot more difficult. So this was done in the first year, the first game, actually. So classic kids literature. The first one is Gulliver's Travels. I haven't read that since I was, oh my gosh. Wow, a long time ago. Second one is uh, Jungle Books was written by Red Yard Kipling, which is spelled just like that, R-U-D-Y-A-R-D. -D. Oh, I heard Richard, but that's okay. Got that's the okay. last We know it's Kipling. Or... Uh, number three is Beatrix Potter. Number four, Hans Christian Andersen. Mm -hmm. And I only saw this in one room, so I don't know about uh, the other room if they got this right. But the year that uh, Tolkien, The Hobbit, was published is 1937. Whoa. Wow. Poor Right Leonard. on. Leonard got it on exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Team, so I, think, I guess it, it was off was, one year. I I guess it was the second half of the 1930s. Yeah. We need so to, to get right in the middle, like pick 37. You're, least, the, best, you're the best guesser I've ever seen, Nolan. That was good. <laughs> yeah, well, it, wasn't, it wasn't a wild guess. So he had, he had like a five-year span just at it for sure. I would have been yeah. one by 20 years if I was what did What did the other team say? Because I didn't. We said 1938. So Yeah, we were still within the one. So okay, we great. Perfect. You guys are on it. Okay. So the four <laughs> children that go through the wardrobe in Narnia were Susan, Edmund, Lucy, and Peter. No Caspian. I couldn't remember Lucy. I devoured the Chronicles of Narnia books when I was a little girl, which makes sense considering my child's name. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Peter Pan was the, the character, fictional character. And the opening paragraph of the classic book was Alice's Adventures in Wonderland Through the Looking Glass. I'll Should take Alice, Alice in Wonderland. In Wonderland. Yeah, oh, it's fine. But it is actually Alice's Adventures in Wonderland Through the Looking Glass. I hope you guys can't hear that. No. <laughs> I can hear you. Hey, you can hear me. That's good. You didn't hear what was outside. No. Siren? <laughs> no, somebody backing up. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Um, the interesting thing about um, the Alice's Through the Looking Glass is that one of the book, you know, I'm going through Mark's books, and he has a book that is all images taken, I think, by um, by uh, the author of the book of of the different kids in the house, because there was all these children in the neighborhood, and he would pose them and take their pictures, and then as they grew up, he would continue taking pictures of them. It's a little creepy, but, you know. If you want to be a photographer, I was a child photographer too. So I, it's it's a whole different world being a child photographer than an adult photographer. Mm -hmm. Adults are much more difficult. <laughs> so uh, the um, the night kitchen is while where the wild things are. You only had to have one, and it is Maurice Sendak. Oh damn it! Oh, where the wild things wow. are. It's a wonderful book if you have. Oh, you haven't seen it. I, I did I actually read that book. I, I think I, I have the a couple movie. Copies. There's a movie. There is. Yep. Yeah. Where the wild things are. Pretty so good. What, what is the what is the candle cot? Can Caldecott? Caldecott, is, Caldecott. A, is a illustration mm -hmm. children's illustrations, uh, giant award for it's the illustration I think part. Right? It's the illustration, not the words, right? No, oh, I think it's the book. I think it's the, the whole book, book as a whole. Which is there one that's just for illustrators that's also really, really I'm sure good. there is, but I there's think a Newberry book. Award. Newberry, but I think it's also for the book, isn't it? Um, I think Newberry is for children's book. Children's okay. book is so same with the call. Maybe Caldecott, right? Caldecott is that well, let me look. Children's books. I guess they're two competing awards, but they're both prestigious. And then, of course, number 10, Charlotte's Web. Everybody cries at Charlotte's Web. <laughs> Don't eat the pig! Do you guys remember what, it, what she says? The first thing that the web is um, says? Some pig. Some pig. Do you remember Some the name pig. of the spider? Charlotte. 
Was it? Oh, Marla, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think about that. You're right. It is Charlotte. So the, the Caldecott is for a picture book for children. And the Newberry? And the Newberry is? Like, yeah. could it be young adults with no photos? No drawings? Oh, my thumbs are slow. The Newberry Literary Award given by the Association for a lot, a lot, a lot of author of the most distinguished contributions to American literature for children. Okay, so it could be like a young adult, something that doesn't have any illustrations in it. Conceivably, one book could win both, you know? Yeah, yeah so well. the Caldecott is known for picture books. Picture books. Yeah, and boy, is that is that a big one. Okay, so let's see. Did Oh, let me get over to my scores. So team number one, no cats or dogs were harmed in the forming of this team. What was your score? Ten. And we're team two. We only got nine. Yeah, nine. <laughs> uh, we start off in last place. Oh my God, you're already in last place. So we get anybody else who comes. Okay, that's tr yeah. that is true. Somebody shows up, you get them. Okay, mm -hmm. so now this one is a new category. It is from the New York Times, and um, I think I'm gonna do this in two parts. So I'm gonna because we're a small group. So I'm gonna read out. And I don't even know the answers to these because it's it's a I'm stealing it from the New York Times. So if you read the New York Times and you've done this book review thing, you will you will get it. So we'll combine the points to the same thing, but I'm going to do it in two. OK, so this is a uh, book review has a uh, multiple choice quiz and it's it's going to test your your knowledge about books and liter literary culture. So they run this column every so often. So what you're going to do, there's only five in this first set. It's, I want you to identify five famous 20th century novels. And I'm going to give you a very simple one sentence plot description. So, and I will give you the, um, the possible choices. So I don't have the answers either because I have to actually click on the box and I didn't do this. So here's question one. Let me put this in the chat. So I'm stealing this from there, so I have to copy and paste. All right, so here's the first one. Question number one, and there are four choices. A man runs around Dublin all day in June 1904. And your four choices are, oh, it's not going to let me copy them. I have to, I have to actually type it. Birchwood. What, why, why, what are you copying it from? The New York Times. I can't copy it because it wants it to be a um because it's it's one of these things you have to type, you have to touch. Yeah, right? you have to answer it. So, so okay. The second answer is Borstal Boy by Brendan. Wait, what's the first answer? First. I I will type it in a second. I mean I'm typing it, but I don't want to um hit enter because I want it to all come out in the same or Ulysses. By James Joyce, or the, your last possible answer is Strumpet City by James Plunkett, S T R U M P E T C I T Y by James O P L U N K E T T. So I'm glad, it, oops, I'm doing it this way. It was okay, a so here's, here's the answers, possible answers for question number one. There was a movie made, possibly. By this, it was written in nineteen eighty four. Not, not, not exactly this, but it was. Uh... Vincent. No hints. Uh, okay, be... here's the next Vincent. one. Vincent. Yes. <laughs> okay, so the next <laughs> one is: a young girl grows up in an impoverished urban area and, inspired by nature's ten tenacity, strives to get an education as a key to success in life. So here's your choices. Think about that before I write these down. Oh, Hamilton knows. <laughs> He's the only one that wrote wow. this much. A and G. He doesn't understand why I'm here. Oh my gosh. I can't. 
Hamilton, it doesn't make it easier to type when you're you're on practically in my hands. I think Hamilton already knew that. I think he wants attention. The problem is, is I have books all over, piled all around. So his normal seating areas are kind of. Uh, Get off the keyboard or we'll ship you to Springfield. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so his normal activity is all kind of a mess. Hold on. Didn't they decide that the the person who apparently ate something or allegedly did wasn't from Springfield but was from Canton? And then yeah, he's the person 170 from something Haiti. miles away, and she's an American born citizen. And it was road cool. Can't trust those kitchen. American born citizens either. And she was accused of eating a cat. Yeah. So it's probably a psychological issue. It was. Yeah, well, I thought we, her know, we know who the sociopath is who started it. Okay, so here's the four choices for a young girl grows up in an impoverished urban area and inspired by nature, nature's tenacity, strives to get an education mm -hmm. as a key to success in life. Your four choices are Angels on Toast by Don Powell, Brown Girl, Brown Stones by Polly Marshall, or My Sister Eileen by Ruth McKinney, or A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. Okay, question number three. I will put the quote in here. A man recalls his childhood and young adulthood in high society for thousands of pages and has a memorable <laughs> encounter with the snack food. Hamilton, move. Okay, let me type in the four choices. So start thinking about what you think it might be. And hopefully that's one of your choices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me tell you about birds and the bees and the trees. You know, I think it's interesting that he doesn't understand that there's humans on the other side that you guys are here. No, he doesn't. He just thinks I'm just ignoring him. And just what singing along with the whatever the noise he hears on the screen or something. Well, since m many of us are not appearing as humans, uh, I wouldn't be surprised anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will have this fixed whenever I do the the latter half of this. Okay, so your your answers are "The Remains of the Day" by Kazo Ish Ishiguro or In Search of Lost Time by Marcel Proust, or, Proust. Proust, or A Portrait Proust. of the Artist as a Young Man, Oop, no, Young Man, no, not, not a man. Man, by James Joyce, or The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. Mm. Those are your four choices. Okay. Question four. An American in Paris dealing with Social alienation and other issues has a relationship with an Italian bartender. Wow. You can hear him, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. He's right in the he's right in the microphones, I guess so. Wow. These are all classic books. I've not read read most of these. Speaking of what like a cat thinks about from an image I, uh, or whatever's around them, I, I often wonder like my cat will follow me around the house and if like I walk into a room that I haven't been in a while and I'll flip the light switch on as it gets there. Does it put together that the light came on because I entered the room and made that happen or like what goes on in its head when that happens repeat? I don't know. <laughs> All they're thinking is food, food. Okay, here's your choices. Paris, mm -hmm. France by Gertrude Stein. Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin, Gigi and the Cat by Colette, mm. and The Ambassadors by Henry James. Okay, this is the last question. So a clairvoyant woman keeps a journal for decades and records the dramatic lives of several generations of her family through love and political upheaval. Clairvoyant? Yeah. So you know this is true.
He's got his little head on, on my arm, like, why aren't you petting me? He's just, I, I called him all the time, and he just, they just shed like crazy. So every time I comb him, or if he just sits there, if I was to sit here and comb him, I mean, just talk to him and pet him, I'd have just hair all over. I shed like that. <laughs> Sounds like a personal problem, huh? It sounds like my hair keeps falling out, yes. <laughs> when I had chemo, boy, that was <clears throat> surreal. Well, that comes out like in, in, in punches, I believe, right? It, yeah, it was enough that it was like you're taking a shower and then it's all over the drain. It was pretty gross. Okay. Number one, your choice is In the Time of the Butterflies by Julia Alvarez. <clears throat> Number two, The Kitchen God's Wife by Amy Tan and Paradise by Toni Morrison. And the last one is The House of the Spirits by Isabel Aldetti. Allende. 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 Okay, so I'm going to send you to your rooms and I'm still going to spy on you and I'm going to bring you back and we'll go over the answers, but then we're going to do the other five and they'll count for your 10 for this whole category. Because So we'll do it differently. What? Because there's only five right here. So people, all yeah, these people, things are head is exploding. Yeah, all these things are different. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Okay. I've only read one. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. I have no idea. What do you think, folks? First one I think is Ulysses I, by James Joyce. Has anyone has anyone read Ulysses? Oh, my God. No, yes, I don't think Ulysses. anyone, not just in our group, I don't think anyone has ever really read Ulysses. <laughs> but, I bought I it. Guess. I bought it. I would guess. People have, bought, people have, plenty of people have bought it. No one has fully read read that. Yeah, I'll guess Ulysses as well. Number two, by context clues, a tree grows in Brooklyn. That's what I was thinking it is. I actually I have had that yeah. queued up to watch for years, and I never have watched it. <laughs> I do know number three. In Search of Lost Time? Yeah. Only because people always talk about the Madelines. Which I assume that comes from. I honestly don't know. I just know it's like a multi-volume set. like The snack food being a Madeline. It being a what? A Madeline a cookie. cookie. Wow, that's pretty specific. They're kind of famous for being Proustian snacks. Four, based on what sounds like a homosexual relationship, if it's with an Italian bartender, um, I think it's going to be Baldwin. Who's Baldwin? Giovanni's room. Yeah. I don't think J Henry James wrote anything like that. And Gertrude Stein, oh, I suppose it could be her. I, I would just think it would be James Baldwin. So, but, so, so, why are you presuming it's a homosexual relationship? Well, because of it's an older book. It's, it's so unlikely that a bartender would be female. No, so but can't the, can't the American in Paris be... could be a woman, and the bartender's a male. No, that's impossible. The story can't be about a woman. Yeah, the, and not, the, not an older story. What? what? It's the main character. Got to be male. Yeah. Well, it could be Gertrude Stein, and she might have written about a woman in Paris. Um, I don't know. It just seems like male on male to me. You know, women wouldn't be described often as dealing with social alienation back in the whenever this was written. But... Hey, I'm I'm open to discussion and argument. 
I, no, I, I mean, I, I, I have no guess either way, except I just didn't agree with your premise, but I have no reason to believe it's that or any of the other ones, so I don't know. And that clear, I, and I have no idea for number five. What are the other choices? House of the Spirits is the answer. It's Tony, it's the Isabella Allende. Oh. That's it. Okay. Then we're done. We're we're toast. We're toast. So, so what's with the first one? Uh, what's the plot of running around Dublin all day? That seems odd. Ulysses is famous for it being about pretty much nothing except what the main character does. He just wanders around town all day. Oh, no, it's just where Seinfeld got the idea. Kind of, yeah. The only mm. it's about 800 pages of it's about nothing. It's a book about nothing. Okay. Kind of, yeah. And there's like one whole chapter that's entirely written and without any punctuation. Well, so I wonder if more people wow. have seen Seinfeld or read Ulysses. Oh, definitely oh. Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Well, Ulysses has been around for a long time. But yeah, there were less people. Time. There were less people before, so yeah, F fewer, the fewer, yeah, and less. <laughs> I never get those straight. No, just fewer, just fewer. <laughs> I like that. Pe People come in discreet yeah, units. Right. So the mass was less. So it's fewer. <laughs> the mass of the yes. people was less. The mass of the people was less. Uh, so, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Seinfeld was like the hit, the hit show for 10 years in a huge market in the United States of English-speaking people. I, yeah, I, I would guess. I that know, would be I, interesting I, to look, thing to look up. I've never understood why anyone cared about Seinfeld. It was just like the only thing interesting to me about Seinfeld was the uh the place they ate, Tom's restaurant. Because <laughs> you I remember you said you had because that was a real place that I, yeah. I ate at least once once a week <laughs> for almost a decade. Well um being a New Yorker, I was a little, you know, I, I liked the, the the shots that they did on on location and that kind of stuff but also it, it, it was a weird show because it was one of those that you didn't none of the characters had redeeming characteristics none of them that was very weird otherwise very good i i don't know the answers to these i know one of them for sure but that that's that's it so we will know these at the same time you guys all right, so I'm going to share the screen so that you can see. Susan, how can we? How can you score this if you don't know the answer? <laughs> we'll know in a second. Okay, here <sighs> it goes. So, man runs around Dublin all day. It was really interesting listening to your conversations. You guys are much more, more well-read than I am. Well, so, some of us on the team were. <laughs> a man runs around Dublin all day in 1984. We're going to guess, right? Is that what you guys put? Yeah. Yep. Nope. It's Ulysses. Oh, it is Ulysses. Yep. Okay. Uh, takes place, the entire action of Ulysses takes place in a single day, skipping from character to character in no particular order. I like what Mike said right away. He says, I don't think Karen's binging. Mute Karen. Okay, I got her. Okay, question number two. I think I know the answer. What do you guys say? The tree goes in Brooklyn is what we said. Yeah, that's what I think. And that is a terrific movie. Uh, it's really difficult to watch. Yep, Tree Grows in Brooklyn. Very, very hard to watch. I didn't watch the movie. I read the book. Oh, yeah. Well, I'd <laughs> say the book would be way worse than the movie. It's, it's really, powerful. really, yeah, it's, it's difficult to read or watch. Okay, question number three. This one I have no idea. I know it's not John Steinbeck. What do you guys say for three? Roast. He said Proust. In Search of Lost Time, I've never heard of him. Madeline, they talk about the Madeline. There you go. Oh, yeah, you guys had it figured out from that. What if he had kept an Instagram account? <laughs> We'd see pictures of Madeline's. <laughs> okay. Question four. American in Paris dealing with social alienation and other issues. It has a uh, relationship with an Italian bartender. What do you guys think? Giovanni. We said the ambassadors. You said the ambassadors. Okay, well, we'll see. Oh, it's it's um, 
James Baldwin it's, in Bonnie's room. It is Baldwin. Wow. And that's, uh, he managed to get a grip on my, okay. Okay. Question five, a clairvoyant. Use your clairvoyant powers. Which one is it? Allende. The one you can't pronounce. The house of the spirits. We said it was the kitchen god's wife because of the generations. Oh, well, we'll find out. Wow. Peggy scores. Uh, it is, it is, um, it is the house of the spirits. Wow, I got them all correct. That's even better. Cool, D. <laughs> <laughs> so keep your score in mind. Um, we're going to go to the second part of this. And the second part is, can you guess these novels that originally got bad reviews? Bad New York Times reviews. So what you're going to do is I'm going to give you uh, the review. And I'm going to give you four cat four titles and you're going to guess which one you think it is all right so let me get over to where i have this written down where did it go i didn't know and i have them mostly done so let's see so peggy you were right i'm looking up giovanni's room uh, yes they meet in a gay bar that was a correct interpretation of that Chat. So here's the the last part of this is titles of what we're going to do. Okay, question number one. So here's the review. One can say that it is much too long because it's material. The cavortings and miseries of an American bomber squadron stationed in late World War II Italy is repetitive and monotonous. Or one can say it's too short because none of its many interesting characters and actions is given enough play to become a controlling interest. So here's your four choices. Gravity's Rainbow, Heart of Darkness, Slaughterhouse-Five, or Catch-22. Okay, and question two. Here's the review. Still, even when I try... In the light of these paley, lurid pages, to take the moral major moral majority seriously, no shiver of recognition is shoes. I just can't see the intolerance of the far right presented directly, not only at abortion clinics and homosexuals, but also at high school libraries and small town school teachers, as leading to super biblical puritanism, by which procreation will be inserted on and reading of any kind banned. Your choices are The Handmaid's Tale, The Hunger Games, Parable of the Sour, and The Dispossessed. Okay, so number three, I'm going to, I have to type the answers. So here's the review for number three. This book, though, it's too long. It gets kind of monotonous, and he should have cut out a lot about these jerks and all that crumbly school. They depress me. They really do. So that is the... Um, that is the um, review, and I'm going to type this right now. And your choices are The Outsiders, The Catcher in the Rye, The Chocolate War, or The Giver. And here's question four. So the review says the author undoubtedly meant her to be queer, but she is altogether too queer. She was only 11 years old when she reached the house in Prince Edward's Island that was to be her home. But in spite of her tender years and in spite of the fact that, excepting for four months she spent in an asylum, she had passed all her life with literate folks and had almost no schooling. She talked talked to the farmer and his sister as though she had borrowed Bernard Shaw's vocabulary, Alfred Austin's sentimentality, and the reasoning powers of a justice of the Supreme Court. Okay, so I'm going to give you four choices. Well, I know the answer to this one. Wow. I don't know the answer. Mm. 
-hmm. I am going to become much more well read. I promise. <laughs> in the next couple of years, I have so many books I'm going to sit down and read. And then I, the problem is retaining the information. Yeah, I was about to say that I can. I've read a lot of these, but I don't remember. Okay, here's your four choices: Emily of the New Moon, Anne of Green Gables, Julie of the Wolves, and Island of the Blue Dolphins. Actually, one of those books was one of my favorite books in elementary school. We read it in fifth grade. Okay, question number five. Oops, I forgot to put the five in front. So it is not so much a novel as an affectionate lark inspired by the so-called beat generation, an example of the degree to which some of the most original work being done in this country has come to depend upon the bizarre and the offbeat for its creative stimulus. Okay. Susan, you're not planning on us doing five rounds, are you? No. Seven. Not with as many people. <laughs> She's Seven. shaking it up. We're going to oh. do it all day. Yeah. No, I don't. And these will go faster, too. Okay, The Cry of the Owl, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, On the Road, and a Coney, Coney Island of the Mind. So those are your choices. And I'm sending you to your rooms again. Recording in progress. No kidding. Share word. Share again. Ah, there it is. Cool. Boy, you type fast. Uh, not really. <laughs> okay. I think it's uh, Slaughterhouse Five that got slaughtered. No, I think it's Catch Twenty Two. Catch Twenty Two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that feels like Catch Twenty Two. American Bomber Squadron. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, I never read that one, and I have it on my list to read. It's, I was not it's, guessing uh, it's fun. It's a good book. Handmaid's That's Tale. It's got to be The Handmaid's Tale. Handmaid's yeah, Tale. that one's definitely Handmaid's Tale. Somebody not liking that, it points out uh, the reality of what could happen. Because it's so preposterous. Yeah. Could Can't never happen. Yes. Seriously. There's no the way they're the ever going right. to ban abortion or, or make people, uh, you know, get, tell them about their uh, their sex lives. Yeah. That was made by a Canadian, that was written by a Canadian woman. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think it was the giver that uh, people didn't like about it. No idea. Crum crumbly school. I've never read any of these. I'd be guessing Catcher in the Rye. What was The Outsiders about? Um, a bunch of youngsters. I don't know. I never read it. Um, I, I think that the, kind of the hook on all these is it's a, now considered a great book. Uh -huh. and right. really famous and got panned at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. So would not The Outsiders fit that? I don't think The Outsiders is considered a great book. It could be. I mean. Mm. Yeah, Catcher in the Rye, I think, fits better. Right. Because of the fame. Catcher in the Rye? Ooh. I never read any of that stuff. Oh, but I do know that what this one is. So is this Anne of Green Gables? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Prince Edward's Island, the Canadian Connection. Yeah, my, my wife went there on her, on her Canadian cruise a couple months ago. Beautiful place. Uh, so I've been told. I haven't been there. Yeah, it should be beautiful. No, I'd really I love to see it. One. Yeah. I think this is on the road because of the beat reference. Yeah. The road. Again. On the road again. Dun, 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 dun. We're going on the road again. Hmm. So did uh, we got them all right? The first five, right? Yep. Yeah. Five out of five, and we'll get a five out of five this time too. Oh, unless don't we get fewer, because we're good. <laughs>
Don't be so smug. We might not. Well, I'm pretty sure we will. Could be the outsiders. That is not particularly long. Hmm? I remember school. Do you remember school in Catch on the Rye? I don't know. I don't remember. Wasn't he in school so when he takes off? Maybe not. Yeah, so, I think yeah. there yeah. he was, yeah. Maybe the chocolate. I don't know. I have really no I idea. I don't know what I don't know what the chocolate war is. Sounds tasty. The outsiders, I think they're kind of on the run. Yeah. So it doesn't seem like it's a school book. I don't know. Maybe if it was a school in the Catch and the Ride, it could be it. Yeah. It, it doesn't seem like a super long book. I don't remember it as being. No, it was not. My guess would be the chocolate war, but that's again. Yeah, okay. Since we none of us know what that is, let's put it. Well, you said you thought the giver sounded familiar from Well, yeah, I thought I had heard during my children's life that it seemed like a ripoff of that story of them passing along books. It bothered me about that. Well, I kind of like that analysis because we don't know what the other books are about. So I kind of go with your the giver as the best guess we had. What do you all think? I'm fine with that. Sure. Sure. I've never heard of it either. Okay, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this one, but I'm going to read it for Karen um, so she she can know. Um, the author undoubtedly meant for her to be queer, but she is altogether too queer. She was only 11 years old when she reached the house in Prince Edward Island that was to be her home. But in spite of her tender years and in spite of the fact that, excepting for four months spent in the asylum, she had passed all her life with, with illiterate folks and had almost no schooling. She talked to the farmer and his sisters as though she had borrowed Bernard Shaw's vocabulary, Alfred Austin's sentimentality, and the reasoning powers of a justice of the Supreme Court. And the choices are Emily of New Moon, Anne of Green Gables, Julie of the Wolves, or Island of Blue Dolphins. I We have to hurry up. I would have guessed Anne of Green Gables because why not? That is my guess. Okay. We need to hurry up. We had one minute for the last one. Uh, and I, I have a guess for this one as well. Oh, guess quickly. We only have 50 seconds. Well, I guess it's on the road because it's um, yeah. the a beat generation uh, work, you know, so. Sounds, sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we are, we are set for second place anyway. Yeah, unless they blow it totally. That's right. So we can relax. Mm -hmm. Susan, we've all agreed that we don't want to stay for very much longer because it's we've already been here for two hours. I'm muted. Oh, that's odd. Okay, yeah. everybody. So let's do these five. And as I said, I have not seen the answers to these. So I am just as 
good guess as yours. There's a couple I kind of think I know, but um, okay. One can say it's too much long because of its material. What did you guys say for this one? We said catch twenty two. Catch twenty two. Yep. That's it. Okay. Question number two. I think it's got to be the handmaid's tale. Yeah, the handmaid's tale because of all the moral majority. Amazing that that book would be so unpopular. That's a powerful book. It's really depressing. It's very I've depressing. Read. I've never seen the movies either. No, it's the book is the thing to say. Oh, okay. It's really well, powerful. The book it's overwhelmingly powerful. Yeah, I read it. I I watched the whole entire series before I read the book, and I liked the TV series better. Hmm. I avoided the TV series because I love that book. All right. Four, so it's four, it's four, season, four seasons, so it expands upon it greatly in a lot of ways. Yeah, and like I, I then then I watched the original movie, which was like comparative to both of them. I thought a pale comparison, and I've also read the prequel, The Testaments, just recently, and it's um, I didn't like it as much as it, but it's an interesting insight into the thoughts about what happened to all the characters. Hmm. Well, I've never seen any of them. I just know it's Elizabeth Moss's Scientologist, which is freaky. yep. Okay, question three. This book is too long. It gets monotonous. What did you think it is? We said The Giver. We said Catcher in the Rye. So now that's interesting because I've, I've, I've read Catcher in the Rye a couple times and it's just not that long. Mm -mm. But it does seem in that yeah, school. That it's Catcher in the Rye, you know, unless you really think about it, it's a it's a stupid book. But then when you really sit and think about it, <laughs> you're like, okay. that would have been your that would have been your review. <laughs> well, no, sure. no, I would it's have thought a about stupid it. Book. That was that we just we talked about that one a lot. It's a very there's a lot going on. Anyway, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say the giver. I've never heard of the giver. Nope, it's not the giver, it's the catcher and rye. You're right. How could they say it was too long? It's a short story. Well, the rest of the review is kind of written by a like a teenager, practically. You know? <laughs> wow, and, and it, all they that just crumbly totally school. missed it. Yeah, they totally missed the whole premise of the book. I don't know if it's life changing, but then again, I'm not a I'm not male, so that was uh, who's having all the problems that he had. Okay, this one about her being queer. Now I know it's not the Island of the Blue Dolphins because I've read that book several times, and I even bought it as an adult so I could reread it because it was it was something we had to read in our fifth grade class, and it was a very important book. So I, I've never read any of the others. What do you guys think it is? Green Gables. Anna Green Gables. They Wait, P -E I is the clue there. Karen? Susan, did you, you, when you read this question, you said one of these books was your favorite as a child. Was it Island of the Blue Dolphin? Yeah, I read, or we read it several mine, times. Mine too. Mine too. You probably had it at this, uh, here in, uh, it was probably required reading when we were kids, right? Yeah, but we loved it. I mean, yeah, everything I read, I didn't love. I read well, that many times. I loved it. We're females, so, you know, it's it's a strong female character, you know, so I guess. Okay, now this one, accidentally, I clicked on the wrong box or something. I'm going to blame the cat. The cat walked on the keyboard. So the answer to this one is on the road. Yep. Is that what you guys got? Again. Yeah. Okay. Let's go over to the scores and see how we did. All right, let's see scores. All right, team team one, what did you get? Six. I have seven. Really? We had three on the first one and we missed one on the second one. We missed three. We had seven we had three in the first half. <laughs> three and four is seven. Yeah, that, that's, that's seven. Okay, team two. Oh, I was thinking they were uh, wrong. They we were got... right. They were wrong. <laughs> We got 10. Oh. Mm. Okay. So, um, because it's Saturday, I thought maybe we should take our picture and we'll do a bonus category. What do you guys think? Does everybody want to hang around long enough for do that? Yeah. So one, more, one more, yeah. One more bonus. bonus is going to be yeah. quick. Sure. 
Okay, so let's take our photo. Karen, you're not able to take a picture, right? Wait, I'll uh, get my own picture on there. There we go. Okay. Oh, that's what you look like. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Okay, everybody, look at the camera and smile. One, two. Hi, Rob. Wait, okay. One, two, three. You don't want to be your little characters? That's no fun. We'll take another one. I, I think it was even better with all the characters. I was thinking I don't know. Have, have with the, do with the avatars, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. I have to learn okay. how to do that. Put your avatars on. I'll do with the avatar. Okay, let me save this one. Okay, I'm still smiling, <laughs> even though you can't see me. I'm smiling. You can't see me, and we, I'm still smiling. We can hear it in your voice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so everybody who wants to be an avatar is an avatar? Okay. All right. One, I want to be an avatar. As <laughs> you, are, you are an avatar, <laughs> Karen. You're a phone. Okay. One, two, three. You know, the avatars don't look like they're smiling much. Well, yeah, I, I want to be an around. avatar, but my my setup won't allow it. Peggy's kind of, her eyes get really squinty when she's an avatar. Somebody tell me how to do it so I can do it next time. I don't know do, how to do that. Do my, do my eyes close when I close my eyes? Yes. Yes. Oh, well, nice. I don't know, but they do close sometimes. <laughs> okay, yes. Somebody tell Gail how to do it. Um, Hit video, you Gail. See, you see, you, know, you see where it says stop video? Which is uh, the click video on the I arrow can... next to it. One person tell her. Where do you mean where do you mean stop video? Yeah, mine doesn't say at the bottom say of the screen. Mine doesn't say that either. It mine says just say video. Yeah. You see where it says video? There's a little yeah. carrot that's going up next to the word video. Do you see that? I don't I have participants chat, react, raise hand, share. It's they farther on the left. Apps, more record notes. What's at the far left? It's it's audio and video are on the far oh, left. Oh, the regular ones. Yeah, audio and video, right. Okay, so right. click on the little carrot that goes up. Yeah. And then you'll see there's a choose a video filter or choose avatar. Or choose avatar. Yeah. Choose avatar. Okay. There you go. And you could create okay. your own avatar like you've done on Facebook. You have an avatar on Facebook. I do. Oh, there's only a few of these in here. Aw, I thought there'd be more animals to choose from. What's wrong with Zoom? Jane is around. Send in a complaint and tell them you demand naked animals. Naked animals. <laughs> okay, once once Gail gets hers, then take another picture. Well, it says I have to sign in to No. It's no. just trying to get it. now to use avatars in your meeting. Oh, they oh, tell yeah, you, you if you do want to have to hoodie, sign in a hoodie or not. I, I remember that. Yeah, you do have to sign in. So I'm imagining Gail leading her next class for 500 people saying, I'm not a cat. <laughs> I'm not a cat. It doesn't let you use your arms, I see. I am not a dog. No, it doesn't. Don't eat me. These are so cute. It mostly just follows your face. They're very clever. And and I think AI has really done wonders for our lives. <laughs> for your information, people, hot dogs aren't actually made of dogs. No, it's they so come from... To see the little that is true. The, it comes ooh. from... The, the history of hot dog comes from when they would go around and they would say, um, your... your uh... Darn, I can't, I can't stand it when my brain does this. Your, your, um, that the, the long the dog the the, the the real dog what is it Dachshund. called? Dachshund. Get your your dachshund food here or your dachshund hot dog here, and that's when it became hot dog because they called them dachshund. Um, huh. Was that the, Leonard in the, in the was, movie in the baseball games? Was that Leonard who said hot dogs are not made out of dogs? That was that was that was Rob. That was Rob. Rob, I have a question. What about Oscar Mayer cold cat? What? Never heard of that. What about Oscar Mayer cold cat? I have never heard of that. As They're not cold, cold cats. cats. It's a They're joke. Cold, cold cats. cuts. Cold, cold cat. cuts. It's a Vincent type joke. Okay. Sure. Let's do the category that is the bonus. And uh, let's see how we do. It's really simple and easy. 
A lot of us are into politics. Um, but, and this is like really important right now, but the electoral college, we've been, you know, love it or hate it. Most of us don't like it very much. But right now there's a lot of pathways for um, the Harris Waltz campaign. So what we're going to do is I want you to pick the top 10 states with the most electoral votes. So you're going to get a bunch, but you're, uh, I don't think anybody's going to get all of them. So let me give you rate that down. Wait, so is this is this the last category? Yeah, we're going to do the bo right. this is our bonus. So you're going to list the top 10 that have electoral votes. This is the kind of thing we do at my house. Well, I did when my kids were growing up. We used to we used to spend one of the one of our holidays was was um Black Tuesday. Is it Black Tuesday? What is it? Super Tuesday. Super Tuesday. We used to have it was a holiday at my house, Super Tuesday <laughs> when Caspian was here. All right. So I'm sending you we to your lose somebody. No. Anyone who isn't here, raise their hand. I thought, I... No, we're all here. The avatars don't let us raise our hands. So no. if we're not here, it's we one don't pull. know. Uh, huh. Okay. Yeah. Florida. Florida. Yeah. Pennsylvania. And I heard Pennsylvania. I think mm -hmm. that they are, yeah. Illinois. All right, let me yeah. share the screen so you can see what we've got. And um, New York. New York, yeah. 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 It's, it's population. Ohio. Yeah. And Ohio. Uh, yeah, Ohio. and um, Michigan and North Carolina. Um, yeah, Michigan, maybe in 10, top 10. It's going to be, it's not going to be that high. Yeah, North Carolina. North Carolina's got a large population. You got oh, Illinois well, there? Yeah, they're going to. Illinois. Gonna, yeah. don't, Illinois. Don't forget, don't forget Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Got New Jer not, maybe not New, maybe not New Jersey. So we don't have Pennsylvania. We have Pennsylvania. What we have now is California, Texas, Florida, Pennsylvania, New York, Ohio, Michigan, North Carolina, and Illinois. We need. Well, um, it's fine. Canadians. It will. Well, whatever. Yeah. Sure. Um, That's it. Ohio, maybe. A lot of big cities there. Sure. Oh, yeah. I don't know. We can throw it out if we get a better answer. Yeah. The cats and dogs. That's why they're eating them. Yeah. <laughs> um, Georgia? Georgia's good. I like Georgia. It's a big state, big Georgia. city. Yeah. Uh, how's Wisconsin? Uh, it's, it's pretty little. So, no? I, I wouldn't do Wisconsin. Um, hey. about, mm, North Carolina. Yeah, North Michigan. Carolina. How about Michigan? Good. Yeah, North Carolina and Michigan. How many we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, we got ten. Okay. Uh, They're not in the right order, but that's okay. <laughs> There's an order. Could have been the right in terms order. Of size, yeah, they wouldn't be in the right order. Yeah. So I this can... is basically the top 10 states by um, population. You know, isn't that how it's decided? We believe Indirectly. so. Yeah. yeah. I don't know enough about the Electoral College. Yeah. The Electoral College is the number of um, representatives, which is of representatives right. population. in the combination of the House and the Senate. Yeah. So it's two per state plus a number based on the population. Yeah. Except there's a bunch of of states that have only one representative uh, because they're 
population is so low. And, and they get to have uh, there, equal standing in the Senate, which is ridiculous. There are they podcasts get... that I listen to. They're trying to raise money for Kamala Harris, raising money for like um, different things. I so. just see you talking. You're so funny because all I see is Leonard and I and a bunch of animals. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. We're all, all animals. Su or Susan, all I hate to tell you this, but we're animals as well. I know. We and, and, and I don't know if Rob's like chewing gum or what, but he's just. I am. I'm. I'm eating a sucking candy. So. Oh no wonder your mouth's making that. Okay, I wasn't quite sure. Mine doesn't open as much as Rob seems to. Arr. I wish we could see your hands because. Wouldn't that be cute? Raccoon Little raccoon stuff. hands would be so cute. I think Zoom could make a fortune <laughs> by uh, actually selling even selling some stuff for like a dollar or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. On pack. They could make a ton of money. Well, you guys impressed me. As I as Linda was saying, it's based on the population of the state. Basically, these are the 10 top pop, most populous states. And I think everybody got them all, I think. Okay, so it's always interesting, the number. So um, I'm going to read it out, and then I'll put it in the chat for you guys, the, the number. But like I said, at my house on um, Tuesday, we would always have, it was always a big deal. You know, we would, Caspian would have a chart with a big piece of paper with all the uh, the states on it. And as they rolled in, we would, he'd fill it all in. It was very interesting because the, the, you just didn't know what was going to happen, especially since on the east coast, uh, west coast, we could see it it rolling into us. Okay, so number one is California with fifty five. Texas is thirty eight. Florida has twenty nine. New York has twenty nine. Illinois has twenty. Pennsylvania has twenty, which is why there's really Focusing on Pennsylvania right now. Ohio with 18. Georgia, another place they're spending a lot of time at, has 16. Michigan, which you wouldn't, I don't know if I'd ever really thought of Michigan as a giant surplus of people, but I guess there are Wait, 16. There. Big state. Yeah, I guess. I've never been. 16 there. And then the last one is North Carolina, yes. which has got 15. And that you may have gone back and forth between New Jersey and uh, North Carolina. New Jersey is the next one, but it's uh, not on this list, but it's 14. So you're close. very close to North Carolina. So, you know, it's also, you it's say, also like about a third or fourth of the area, which tells you about <laughs> how densely packed it is. Did you, did you say Florida? Florida is 29. Florida. Yeah, three. Okay. Yeah, right. so those are the states. Now they're these are they're spending a lot of time in Michigan, North Carolina, and Georgia and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. I don't know what Wisconsin is. I think it's like twelve or something, ten. Well, they're spending the time because they're purple, right? They're purple. They're very, very close. Not because they have a lot and, of and they're well, though it's both. It's they're spending the time in states that have a lot of, of electoral college votes that are close. Yeah. And Arizona is now, that is getting an awful lot of attention. I think it's only three votes. No, no, that is a lot more than that. Phoenix is a massive city. What no, is it like? Phoenix, Phoenix is in Arizona. Yeah, yeah, I know, but it's it's getting a massive amount. Uh, you know that, Nevada is the issue. Do you all know the history of why Nevada is shaped the way it is? It's one of my favorite Nevada stories. The why is what historically why if 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 you go in the East Coast. It's because the geography and the politics of the early part of the country that you have all these tiny little states shaped in all kinds of odd ways. But as you start moving out west, the states start becoming very box-like, very rectangular, right? The only time they stop being that is when geography, like California, has mountains that help define the border. But if you look at Nevada, Nevada's a square, but it's got this part that sticks down, right? Right. Do you know why? I think I heard that. Go ahead, tell me. Originally, it was a square, just like most of the other Western states. But in the Civil War, Arizona supported the Confederacy. 
and Nevada uh -huh. supported the Union, and Las Vegas had water because of the Colorado River. Consequently, it was it was a very populous place and a very desirable place in the desert, right? And Lincoln wanted the votes in Congress after the Civil War. So he went to Nevada and said, will you join the Union? And the very smart Nevadans at the time said, we want Las Vegas, which belongs to Arizona now. Give us Las Vegas and we'll join the Union. And Lincoln said, okay. And they pulled the southern border of, of, Las Vegas, of Nevada down to give Nevada, that's where that point is, mm -hmm. to give Las Vegas to Nevada. And that, that's yeah. why they say, we say we're battle-born. That's, the oh, that's battle interesting. I, don't I thought Las Vegas was, was kind of small before Bugsy Siegel showed up and started well, all we, the gambling. But it had water in the desert. Okay. So they knew it had the potential. So Nevada, we actually have in the local museum, for those of you coming to Saicon, if you want to go to the local museum, they have an original 18th, 19th century sign that says Las Vegas, Arizona. And you know what? I'm looking at an old chart. This is how much it's changed because when I wrote this category in 2020, Pennsylvania had 20 and now it has 19. Well, it was based on the 2020 census. Yeah, so so it has changed since then. So North Carolina has 16, and now it had, at the time, I said it had 15. So it, it North Carolina gained one, Pennsylvania lost one. Ohio- And, and I, I remember has when lost the most one. populous state was New York, and now it's number four. Wow, New York has 28. So this is already, this is already outdated since i'm looking at the i'm looking at the 270 to win site so nevada only has six that's amazing that nevada would be getting as much attention as it does because it's how so close this race is going to be it's so yeah, and i think and, and i think another part of it is the um the senate yeah oh yeah yeah and arizona that senate arizona. race is really with an incumbent but what yeah. happens in Nevada is exactly what happens in almost every other state. Las Vegas is very, very democratic. The rest of the state is mostly rural and is very, very Republican. Right. Yep. North Carolina has surpassed Michigan. So, wow, my answers are really wrong. So New Jersey is 14. So the answers are still correct, but the numbers that I have are incorrect. That's, that's, I had, oh, California, oh, I do remember this, California lost one, we're only 54 this time, and Texas is now 40, they gained two, this is really important why we got to get that. Yeah, but they're all right. illegal. <laughs> we're counting but the counts. But we know the voting anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Could we Mark, actually that. turn Texas purple or so I just watched the whole Very talk on what the, the, what the governor like, there is trying to prevent, who? which is uh, mailing the out registrations to uh, yeah. people who are on, and they're, because they're probably mostly Latinos and they don't want them to yeah. vote. Yeah. Yep. So a lot of Latinos are apparently considered a no, it, I mean, I remember when Texas was a reliably Democratic state. Wow. I don't and know. California was a reliably Republican state. Oh, oh so I do remember is, California kind of being Republican. That was before the civil rights movement. All right, so let's get the scores. Um, where are we at? In my province, they're going to try to copy some of the United States and try to. Um, oh, right. oh, please. Well, uh, uh, Alberta is Texas with with snow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's really bad up here. And they're going to do their best to um, cheat. The UCP are going to try to cheat. Ooh. No one cheats. Don't be yeah. silly. Okay, here's oh, our scores. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. No cats or dogs were harmed in the forming of this team. We had Jen. But we're and, not no cats or dogs. And we're team two. No, we also got 10. So Did you want to put close. that under bonus? Oh, yeah, you're right. I am so sorry. I must do this correctly. Just give us all tens. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> okay, 29 to 27. So that was very close. Awfully Nothing close. to be embarrassed about. Not at all. And, and you know, oh. it was lost really on the second round. Yeah, that's true. Because yeah, the first round, there was yeah. one. Yeah, one point. Yeah, so. All righty, Rue. It's great to see you guys. Um, um, thank During you for the joining day. me on my Saturday, my trivia. Next time we do this, hopefully we'll have a lot more people show. But it was fun, even just this very intimate group like this. It's, it's fun. Uh, we are enough. We are enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So anyway, it's nice to revisit some of these old categories that obviously have to be redone because the thing isn't quite right. But so today and I it have feels a funny lot of saying this. Feels funny saying this to, with all the avatars, but nice to see everybody. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is great to check in and see everybody. Now, next Thursday, I will not be here. I'm going to be in Dallas, going to a mentalism conference for Mark. Uh -huh. So, um, hopefully, somebody's going to be running the category, the game for us. Um, I've asked, so I haven't heard any responses back with the volunteers. But we're going to need somebody to do that. I have people who are going to do categories next week, and it is going to be um gail rob vincent and karen so hopefully all, all four people who are here oh that's true so we will have something and i will watch the video later for you whoever does it but it's great to see you all all right thanks Take for care. having me have a lovely <laughs> saturday all right and share day, and when people. when we do the next one, make sure you invite some people who would normally never be able to show up. Mike always has trouble showing up, you know, because of the time difference. But so it's great to see. But um, see invite everybody. some people next time. Have a good weekend, everybody. Night, everybody. Right. Good Bye. afternoon. Bye. Good afternoon. Bye.